education programs here at UUAC, we join a long tradition of spiritual ancestors who have wondered how to pass their faith on to their children. And this morning, I want to tell you a bit about the origins and influencers of our Unitarian Universalist religious education. Because whether or not you grew up Unitarian Universalist, and whether or not you have children in our programs, our religious education programs reflect a belief and an orientation to learning and to growing and to forming our faith that affects all of us. So let's begin with a little tour down memory lane. The earliest known children's religious education program in the United States happened here in Massachusetts, in Beverly, Mass, and it was founded, this religious education program was founded in 1810. Soon after this program was established, a movement to establish Sunday schools took hold across denominations. In the earliest religious education programs, these were a means to teach literacy to children who worked for six days a week and took the Sabbath off and otherwise would not have learned to read. And this was done so by reading the Bible and then through rote memorization and catechism through question and answer style instruction. In 1827, 10 Unitarian churches formed the Boston Sunday School Society, and they began to publish guidebooks for religious instruction. In 1852, the Society wrote a series, series of manuals for religious instruction, and they did an incredibly novel thing for that time. They broke up the manuals into separate age groups, and for the first time tailored lessons to the developmental stages of children. In the mid-1800s, with the onset of the Transcendentalist movement, we saw a growing belief in the innate goodness of human souls, especially the purity of souls of babies and children. And in these liberal religious and educational circles, influenced by the Transcendentalists, they, oriented toward, they began to orient toward nurturing that innate goodness. Skip forward to the early 1900s, and our Unitarian ancestors are in the midst of grappling with the culture at large, the effects of world wars and industrialization, and there is growing interest in humanism as a theological orientation. And humanism at its core says that human experience is that through which we make meaning, that human beings are an end to themselves, unto themselves, rather than a means to an end, that science is real and matters, that human experience and knowledge should guide our morals, and that our actions more than tradition or God, and our actions ma matter more than tradition or God or the Bible, though all of these are sources of wisdom. So into the mix, we add a man named John Dewey. Has anyone heard of him? He did not invent the Dewey Decimal System. John Dewey was an American philosopher and an educational reformer and a psychologist, but he was also a Unitarian. And if you've ever studied educational theory or history, you've probably heard of John Dewey. John Dewey was also a prominent Unitarian thinker, and he was one of the 34 signers of the 1933 Humanist Manifesto, which laid out those principles of humanism that I just, just discussed. And in 1937, so this is the context that they're living in. In 1937, four years after the Humanist Manifesto was written, and in the midst of the Great Depression, the American Unitarian Association hires this woman. Does anyone know who she is? Duh, Polly, don't tell. <laughs> Polly is a retired religious educator. Sophia Foz. Is that a seminarian? This is Sophia Lyon Foz, and you may recognize her name because why? Thank you. Yes, and she is actually who I want to talk about today. In 1937, she was hired by the Unitarian, American Unitarian Association to get Unitarianism out of a crisis. In the 1930s, there was reportedly widespread dissatisfaction with the Unitarian Sunday School programs and membership in Unitarian churches at large was dropping. Foz was hired by the Unitarian Association as ch the children's editor for a new curriculum, the New Beacon series, in 1937. So let me, did you know also, when you think about the Foz room, that our, that Foz room is named after a woman who is falling off right now, 
who is also a religious educator. Because I, and I want to talk to her about her today because even if you have just been a part of this church for a short time, I imagine that she has impacted your life more than you know. She was born in 1876 to Presbyterian missionary parents in China. And she herself wanted to be a missionary, but she found herself more and more drawn to education. As a college freshman, Sophia taught her first Sunday school class to kindergartners in her Presbyterian church. And she was frustrated with the ways that the curriculum was conveying doctrine to this, these young children. And so she began looking for better ways to help the children engage with the material, which led her to learn more about children's development and about biblical scholarship. And through this learning, her own theology became more and more liberal. She later enrolled as a graduate student at Columbia University's Teacher College, where she met and studied under John Dewey, this prominent educational theorist. And later she enrolled as a divinity student at Union Theological School in New York. And after, that, after seminary, she joined the faculty in 1927. And through all of this, she was using John Dewey's methods of, of experimental and experiential education and combining them with religious education methods and experimenting in whatever church she could get to let her be in charge of their Sunday school program. Her work focused very strongly on engaging children emotionally, on honoring their natural sense of wonder and inquisitiveness, and asking big questions without predetermined answers, which was a huge shift in the question and answer rote memorization style. She put human emotions and human experience as at the centerpiece of growing our liberal faith. Does this philosophy sound familiar to you? It should because it is what we still use in many ways. She devoted her life to the big questions rather than the big answers. And as she put it, she said, in the great religions, especially those of the Western world, the accent has been on beliefs and convictions rather than upon questioning. In fact, the distinguishing marks between different religious sects has been for the most part the differences in their beliefs. Though, although beliefs are important, we need to remind ourselves that they are the fruits of experience and that in the natural world, each new life begins with its own seed. As parents of children and as educators, we need to practice looking beneath the convictions to find the earlier experience that awakened the questions, which in turn called forth the answers, then given as convictions. Sophia Lyon Foz was the children's editor for the New Beacon series of curriculum from 1937 to 1951. And the amazing thing is that her curricula, the New Beacon series, was used by both Unitarian and Universalist churches long before these denominations merged in 1961. The children and youth programs had been collaborating and sharing resources and meeting together and using shared curriculum between these two denominations as early as 1897. And religious educators and children and youth were at the forefront of where our denomination would go and they were leading the way. And so we're returning to Sophia Lyon Foz, she was the editor, author, or co-author of more than a dozen books, including some that are predecessors of curriculum that we still use today. In 1947, she published a curriculum known as The Church Across the Street. And do you know what that, that curriculum became? Neighboring Faiths, which we use for our sixth grade curriculum. Who here has taken our Neighboring Faiths class, including for adults, or taught it? Yeah. That is a direct, direct descendant of Sophia Fah's work. She joined a Unitarian church in 1945, and she was ordained as a Unitarian minister in 1959 at the age of 82, in, recogni in recognition of her ministry of religious education. And in 1978, she passed away at 101 years old. Perhaps my favorite quote of hers is this. We wish children to come to know God directly through original approaches of their own to the universe. And I love her emphasis on personal experience, her deep respect for children and youth, and her love of the natural world and the awe that it inspires. 
Since the end of her career, so much more has happened in our religious education world, and there are so many more people and theories and events that have also shaped our religious education programs for young people. But those are stories for another day. Today, I lift up Sophia Lyon Foz because of a few reasons. One is because of the all too often forgotten stories and histories and influences of women on our denomination and in our world. And the other is because of the enormous impact that she had on our religious education programs and because of the enduring message of her work. Religious education in the 21st century is changing and church in the 21st century is changing because the world around us is changing. As social media grows and as the number of people who indicate none, N-O-N-E, as their religious affiliation on Pew surveys climbs, as more and more things are scheduled on Sunday mornings, we are seeking new ways to do church. We know that the old models may not last forever, but there are things that will endure at the core. As we form and grow our faith throughout our lives, and as we create spaces to form and grow the faith of the young people in our midst. And many of these things that I see as the enduring legacy, see as core are the enduring legacy of Sophia Lyon Foz. That experience matters, that meaning making of our experiences is one of the most important religious tasks we have, that as Unitarian Universalists, our primary way of doing theology is by interpreting in experience and that whatever form this meaning making takes in a classroom or online, in congregation, in the midst of others or in the woods, whether wonder is found in science or in mysticism, that knowledge that we can all at any age have a connect, direct connection to the holy is perhaps most importantly, the legacy that lives on, as Sophia Lyon Foz said, that life becomes religious whenever we make it so. May it be so, and amen.